Uh, yeah, thanks again. So, if I remember correctly, with a um, joint, this is a joint paper, but um, your colleague was unfortunately not um, able to come. Um, so, let me still uh, quickly introduce that. It's, um, this is Abdul Halik Aziz, who was not able to come, um, a researcher interested in critical discourse analysis from Colombo, Sri Lanka. And uh, present, we've got um, Carmen Agui. Yera Kanenre, okay. Lecturer in linguistics at the University of Granada, Spain, uh, interested in linguistic questions ranging from syntax, corpus linguistics to um, the syntax sem semantic interference uh, interface, sorry. And uh, now I'm sure we'll hear more about the critical digital discourse analysis. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, as he said, um, this is a joint paper, but unfortunately, my colleague uh, Halik is, is not able to come because of his problems. So, um, a little bit sad that here alone because this project is more his baby than mine. But uh, anyway, okay. So, we are going to talk about something um, which was very interesting for us as part of a project we were doing on Muslims in Ireland, and we got some interesting results about what we call the friendly nexus, which is the alternative modeling of Protestant Catholics in Muslims in Irish societies. Okay, so we will start with this brief introduction, then this is the then a brief of the data methodology, and the analysis of the results. So yeah, as I was, I was talking the other day, so um, the rise of the family body has seen the increasing class of Muslims as the global order. And this problem has been um, increasing with the rise of uh, silence and phobia and the advent of internet, and everybody just writing their opinions on the web. However, the question is whether this authorization of Muslims follow a similar pattern all over the world, or there are some differences or particularities in different countries. Uh, what is new about the Republic of Ireland in Northern Ireland is that there were not used to have Muslims in Ireland. Actually, we, we found many tweets in which uh, people that there are Muslims in Ireland, and uh, so it's a quite a recent phenomenon. So uh, what we're going to try to do in this paper is to unveil this revolving authorization of Irish religious communities in Irish Sunday districts. How uh, Ada Protestants gathered from Muslims are alternatively other. So we chose the, uh, to refer to this phenomenon, which is the Neolithic school of Renemy, which is a very common phenomenon from uh, on the web, it's a common word from the web, it refers that sometimes you have your friend or your enemy, depending <coughs> So I'm not, I'm not sure, but probably you are familiar with a little bit of history of Ireland. So it's a, it's a nation which possess a long history of conflict and violence, mainly because of religious, but also political reasons, right? Sometimes the use of religion as a political tool to divide uh, Protestant Catholics. Obviously, this is a short <laughs> summary of what's happening because we are not going through this, okay? But just as a historical background. What is important, I think, is that I know the Island was specifically talked about by uh, a very complicated, controversial time, which was called the Troubles. And um, even though it was not a conflict drawn around people's minds, is the fact that most unionists belong to the Protestant faith and most missionaries were associated with the Catholic faith, which is like the big division in the country in the last years. And now we have another problem in Ireland, it's like we have a Protestant Catholics and non new minority, which is, which is Muslims, right? Still Muslims in Ireland is very significant group by number, in both, both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. As you can see here, uh, some of the leaders. Uh, in 2012, it was like over um, 10,000 uh, Muslims, which is a very, very small minority, right? From over 40 countries, including Europe and the Far East. And what is also meaningful is that most of the Muslims in Northern Ireland are economically well off and highly educated. So and that's the situation in other countries, in spiritual terms, this is not a situation with Muslims, but I'm going to find many Muslims who are academics or uh, lawyers or doctors or something. But in Ireland, this is the situation. <coughs> so, very briefly, and I'm not going to bore you with this, but this paper is based uh, used as a methodology uh, common statistics. So what we did was to retrieve a collection of tweets 
from 2010 <coughs> to 2014. And because people in Thailand, I was talking about Thailand, are not very fond of hashtags, we could not retrieve the tweets using the hashtag as a core. So we uh, introduced some general search terms like Muslims in Ireland, Islam in Ireland. So still, um, we compile these tweets. Obviously, we removed because of uh, privacy restrictions the names of the, the authors. Unless in your study, they cannot be named because Twitter will just is, is totally against that. And this uh, causes mistake as a systematic way to analyze the data, right? So um, that was the methodology approach. So um, as I explained before, we use the uh, framing name as a genealogist in its formal process to describe an entity of a person that alternates between being a friend and an enemy. And thus this term actually uh, captures the relationships that this study is going to discuss. Okay, so we have this corpus of all the tweets from 2010 to 2014. But that was Muslims in Ireland to Islam in Ireland. So we selected a subcorpus of tweets, which uh, only based on two criteria. <laughs> uh, one is that the three parties, Christians, um, Christian Catholics and Muslims, were depicted in the tweets in relationships where one of the three parties was in an opposition position to the other, or two parties were cast together in the same light with only an implied mention or no mention at all of the other. So more or less the data in the end were like this, right? Um, so we can have like two main categories. I have that only one type of groups is other, or both of them are other. Okay, so uh, I said that uh, for the methodological approach we use COPs in this case. <coughs> this is a COP critical discourse analysis study. So we use systemic functional linguistics as our linguistic framework and uh, third class as our main uh, philosophy for trans data. And it was very useful for us to use the work by Martin and White and the analysis of a phrase language, right? So they both found how tweets are, um, they depict the, the role of uh, Muslim Catholics and uh, Protestants. Okay, so um, this is the overall uh, look of the, how to recognize the data loop, right? Interrelation, the interrelations of the three groups in the corpus, right? So basically we establish like two categories uh, in which one of the three groups are favored or vilified by the others. And we'll see some examples in a moment. In general terms, uh, before coming into the detailed analysis of the tweets, in general terms, Protestants are by far the most vilified group in the, the corpus. Um, sometimes are vilified at all, sometimes in company of others. I will, we will, I will show you in a minute. Muslims were the second most vilified group. And Catholics are the least. <laughs> best treated, right? So the most favored group in the corpus is uh, Catholics. Um, and we will see the examples and we will understand that. Um, yeah, sometimes happens that they are favored along with Muslims or with other group or alone. So um, we have here some detailed description of what happens sometimes when some Muslims are the second most favored groups in the corpus. They will not talk of relative locations. Sometimes, in most of them, we are favored with Catholics, and only of them were alone, etc. I don't want to spend much time on this because the important thing is the comment of the tweets, right? And then the same more data about the analysis that we need. Okay, so that is the most important, most interesting section. Okay, so one example of our categories. Uh, so for instance, we have here analysis in which the category in which Catholics are vilified and Protestant and Muslims are favored, right? So one is vilified and two together are other, right? So all the tweets in this section, right? It begins the very low amount of activity in this category. Uh, both of the tweets started with Brian Lisa Jonathan via the charity of Catholicism. So you have here an example of a tweet. There it says there is a telling in Islam. What about the stream on one conflict in Northern Ireland, which involves his own faith Catholicism? And this is interesting because um, they involve uh, 
mainly the both uh, uh, Catholics and the government in Northern Ireland, and also the, uh, there is a very deeply rooted sentiment being anti tolerant right? So also interesting for us was the presence of the hashtag EDL, which corresponds uh, that this discourse it has its origin in the controversial English intense meeting. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this organization, but it's an ultra-nationalist uh, English um, association, but actually a very popular one. Another category which are Muslims are unified and Protestant Catholics are favored, which is the most frequent, the second most frequent category in Congress. Muslims are unified and Protestant Catholics are cast in opposition to them. Um, this was mostly expressed in a manner when Muslims are portrayed as the new other in Ireland. So before there was the other could be, depending on the speaker and the context, could be Protestant or Catholics, but no help a new other or Muslims, right? And this is like one of the most repeated tweets in the corpus, which is, I've come up with a way to unite the Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland, sent over under the Muslims. That is, now we have a common enemy who are Muslims, so this is the only possible way that we can join, we can be the um, Catholics and Protestants, right? Despite being historical enemies in our region of Ireland. Another possibility, which is not very common, is like, well, actually, the second most common is the Muslims are verified and Protestants and Catholics. Right. Uh, important too, the presence of the hashtag TCOT, which also tells us a lot about the origin of the tweet. Which is TCOT is top conservatives on Twitter, which we refer, is related to the Republican Party in the United States. That's why they mention Obama. <coughs> why they mention Obama is because there is some organization. So Obama in Ireland, a traditional Catholic country, says Catholic education is divisive. Well, he thinks let's go to Saudi Arabia. And it's obviously this is a typo from, from the tweet, but we keep on typing so and insult Islam. So uh, note the um, emphasis on traditional and uh, irony qualified as a Catholic country, right? Which serves as a unification of the other's indignation that Obama would never dare to go to Saudi Arabia and insult Islam. So Obama came to Ireland and insult Catholic, so how did he dare, right? So in a way. This, this sort of data confirms our previous study from the other day that uh, always there's this uh, portrait of Obama as uh, being pro Muslim and anti Christian. Um, another um, category, right, is like Muslim number five and Protestant number is a favorite. I will just <laughs> mention one of the tricks. Um, well, three Catholics and Protestant Catholics school in Ireland that is going to work against Christianity. So we have here another typical stereotype. So it's like Islam versus the West. Islam is the new order. Islam is uh, the enemy, the natural enemy of the West. Another category is that Protestants, not Muslims. Protestants are vilified, and Muslims and Catholics are favored. Um, it is the most frequent. This is the most frequent category in the corpus. Um, Tweets where Protestant and British are vilified, as opposed to Muslims and Catholics. Uh, actually, this is the most retweeted tweet in the whole corpus, which was um, British head preachers attack Islam and Catholics in Ireland. Um, it refers to something which happened last month of June, in which um, there was um, pastor, past, a Protestant pastor from Northern Ireland, uh, James McConnell, who called Islam a heathen doctrine is formed in hell. Right? And those comments, which are really hard, were backed by uh, Northern Ireland Prime Minister Peter Robinson. Later, immediately he apologized, but it was too late because the world was like on fire just commenting on this because actually it's quite a controversial, must be offensive comment, right? So we change which is about now in Catholic in Ireland. This is the most frequent people in the world. Protestants are verified and Muslims are in favor, right? Um, you have here another example. Both Catholics and Muslims are joined victimhood. Biblically, ignorance and intolerance toward Muslims in Northern Ireland is that which Catholics they are holding some support. So they are always discomposing between the three groups. Depending on the speaker, one is the victim, the others are heroes, depending, right? So it's very interesting for us because the concept of authorization is um, rotating. It's not it's not fixed. It's not it's like dynamic depending on the speaker. Catholics are favored, Muslims and Protestants are vilified. But there was only one tweet belonging to this category, which is also meaningful. 
not in my inventory, just to see the three gardens now get smoothed out in where capitalists are free building for everyone. Right? So it's a victimization of capitalists, right? Another example is like um, Muslim are created and capitalism and health systems are purified, right? Um, actually, um, just when Muslims were favored, tweets where Muslims are favored are very low in number, right? In comparison with other Qataris. All of them, as an example, absorb Muslims from blame for terrorism as credit to Catholics and Protestants in the East, right? So you can see here, for instance, some examples which are also quite relevant. Um, some big kids in here Muslims are terrorists. We have Christian terrorists. As Ireland and Germany. And another one, I know the Catholic and Protestants are setting up bombs in Ireland. Muslims fought that. Which obviously last kid uh, makes use of irony, right? Mm -hmm. to, declare, to declare that obviously no, the Catholic and Protestants are setting up bombs in Ireland. It's Muslim fault, right? Another example is Protestant favorite Muslims and Catholics are very bad. And uh, this is the most common category in which uh, one party was favored and against the other two. Um, most of the tweets in this category fought to both Muslims and Catholics in a negative light. Um, however, not all, all of them fought to Protestant in a positive light. Some of them also bring in a non Protestant, atheist, and secular perspective. That's another important aspect of the photo. Sometimes you can see, like, members of, it's very easy to see from the number of years, members of one of these three religious community attacking or really find the others. But sometimes they are not uh, even, um, they are atheist or agnostic people criticizing all the three communities in there, right? So uh, the trick here is what to the wise allow Islam to flourish in Northern Ireland would make the trouble seem like it dance in a nightclub. So this is the typical set of things. Um, I know you can tell Categories like Protestant favored and Muslims and Catholics are unified. And uh, well, more or less, we can see um, tweets like these use term like brainwashed, which is quite a strong term and false to describe the effects of religion. You can understand that the author of the tweets uh, is someone who is not very familiar with religion and actually not very fond of any sort of religion. So, use this harsh, harsh language to refer to people who practice any sort of religion. So, Washington in Ireland draws protests from Iran people who have been brainwashed by the Catholic Church nearly as bad as Muslims in France. Well, Ireland writing the false religion of Catholics, but I guess right now in 30 years, Islam is to be number two religion in Ireland. So both of them at the same level. Okay, so the conclusions. So there is a very clear bias toward favoring Catholics in the brothers. Protestants were also the most required of the groups with Muslims coming a close second. So there's like, if we can talk in those terms, like there's a clear winner, like Catholics are favored. The second, the most beloved is not Muslims, but Protestants. Also, maybe it's because it's too soon in, in the sense that uh, Muslims is a new phenomenon. We should wait like for 30 years to see what is happening, right? They are still getting used to these new uh, people coming to the country. Protestants <coughs> have been there always. So it's like, let's say, like the traditional enemy, natural enemy are Protestants. <coughs> the most brilliant groups and Muslims come to a close second. That is where they list them still divide by a significant margin. And um, the fact that most of these women occurred with Catholics place on the same side as Muslims in opposition to Protestants indicates the sentiment that Muslims are always in the historical rivalry of Catholics and Protestants. That is, Muslims, the third party in question, it's like now it's now taken either by Catholics or Protestant depending. So taken as an enemy, not as, as an enemy, right? Uh, the unification of Muslims at the hands of Protestants has a sympathy to the comparison of their fight. With the long sudden certain Catholics are seen to have to at the hand of Protestants. Actually, we found some tweets in which were like um, after Muslims the new Catholics, just in fact that uh, in the Northern Ireland we Protestant attacking the Catholics. I think you are Muslim the new Catholics. At the same time, Muslims also appear to be playing the role of the new order. It's you know, most effective ones in the United Catholic and Protestant in the age of Twitter. That is, it depends. Catholics and Protestants are natural enemies, unfortunately, through our dreams, right? But we have a new party, which is Muslims. So um, 
the only way to, to unite Protestants and uh, Catholics is having a common enemy, which are Muslims. So this is the situation in Congress. Geopolitical concerns and international discourses of Islamophobism need to be fitting into this perspective. Because uh, we have seen some tweets are written by uh, people who are not Irish. They make reference to the United States situation. But this Islamophobia, uh, let's say, international Islamophobia, uh, trying to come into Ireland. Catholicism and Islam are associated as more in general terms than Protestants. Going by the identification from the anti Muslims and Islamist perspective, it's clear that the association of these two faiths with violence and service is far stronger than that of the Protestant faith. So, yes, in the corpus we still find some of the typical stereotypes that you can find in any of, any of the corpus concerning Islam. So, the uh, relationship, the straight relationship between um, terrorism and Islam or difficulty to adapt to the host culture, etc. Those, those uh, features appear in the corpus. But in this corpus, which is really uh, genuine, is that there are three parties in question, right? It is not Christian versus Muslims, Jews versus Muslims. <coughs> now we have Protestant Christians and Muslims. There's a key conflation of the Protestant faith with England and Britain and Catholicism in Ireland. It's not only the problems <laughs> deeper than that, because Protestants usually go in England, and Muslims go um, and, so, and uh, Catholics go in Ireland. And Catholics and Muslims are generally seen as victims and are seen to unite in solidarity between Protestants, British, and Germany. That's true. So let's say that Catholics, obviously, we were talking about they are the most favored group in the corpus. But uh, also, Catholics are the most favored, and also they are um, perceived as victims if you compare the situation of Protestant and England. Right. That's all. Yeah, great. Thanks for this uh, great talk and research. Thank you. Um, and questions, please. Yes. Um, I found the MTC. Uh, yeah. Yes. And I wonder if it's not also um, a problem of generational. Uh, perception or representations because for the older people the war of religion between protestants and catholics is hard to bear uh, i uh, remember the, the articles uh, written by the the irish press uh, during the ira uh, attentats and mm -hmm. uh, things like that so for people having uh, such an experience uh, i think there is uh, this split between uh, Catholic and uh, sure. and not the Muslims. Maybe for the young generation, uh, the Twitter generation or the digital natives, yeah. uh, and with this uh, Islamophobia, maybe uh, they uh, introduce this new uh, enemy uh, mm. for uh, well equilibrating or balancing. Maybe it was introduced. Oh, oh yeah, instrumentalized. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. This is another part of. Yeah, but that would be I think uh, it would, but uh, you mm. could uh, not uh, yeah, we uh, research know, such, exactly. uh, such an element Some about the that. age of. Exactly. The Some problems with that is like but. we can retrieve with our software. We can retrieve, we can exactly know the place where the tweet was written. Yeah, but, not, but no more data. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. they use, you know, a fake profile, a fake name. So even yeah. though even though we, we try to ask these people, uh, if this is for study, uh, you can can I get your name, your age, your nationality. Yeah. We are not hundred percent sure that they are going to tell us the truth, right? That's another problem. And what you say is totally we agree. Because, uh, it's the same problem for the old people in uh, France and Germany. They can't forget exactly. Yeah, the, yeah, uh, it's true. It's true. In that is also that Muslims arrival in Ireland is quite a new phenomenon. Actually, as I told you, there are many tweets who say, "But there are Muslims in Ireland." Like I didn't yeah. even know that. They, what are they doing there? Yeah. This is not a place for them. And you can see still there are a small minority, maybe ten thousand. It's, it's very, it's very small minority. But it's true that Islam is expected to be the second most. Um, most popular religion in, in Ireland for uh, by 2030. So they expected like progressive yeah. immigrants yeah. coming. So still is very incipient, mm -hmm. but we should wait for I don't know 20 years to see how the situation for is the developing. Exactly, and now <laughs> new generation don't remember 
what, yeah. what were the problems between Catholics and, and Protestants, and now we have a new third party or whatever. Actually, this this came out like a surprise for us because we were analyzing like the situation of Muslim in Ireland, and then we found what is what is this? <laughs> we found this data very interesting. Like the enemy on the front is, was rotating, was uh, yeah. was not fixed depending yeah. on the speaker. So we found it like by surprise this data. Um, but yeah, you are totally. I, I think yes, it's a recurrent. Uh, have you heard about uh, this uh, philosopher and his story? Yes. Uh, he links memory of, I mean, with the past and with uh, all this heritage of. Uh, yeah, probably uh, people who are tweeting now, I mean, are probably people in their 20s, they did not live the conflict. Yeah. yeah. They know the conflict that, because of yes. history books and their parents telling them. So yeah. they have to wait. For it's that. a question of uh, instrumentalizing uh, this totally. new uh, threat. And uh, they adopt it without right. knowing, in fact, the context. And yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Okay, are there further questions? Yes. Just in short, because part of my questions was already answered. I was thinking of some, uh, because it was very interesting to me, uh, some sociological dimensions of the problem, and it's, uh, it is concerning that methodology part, the lack of information about who is actually. Uh, tweeting about, I mean, it's analyzing of public discourse, but it would be interesting also to see who are behind, because... Uh, Very interesting uh, to yeah, see. Yeah, to see the social backgrounds. In this, in this corpus, it's not that evident. This, this kind of... This corpus is not that evident, but uh, the, the paper we presented last year, uh, last <coughs> uh, two days ago, actually, um, we suspect that there are some organizations or there are some people tweeting pet by political parties Constantly, because it's impossible that someone with, with a job can spend. I mean, the, the frequency of tweets is so. As someone doing that professionally, and curiously, interestingly, these people who tweet with such frequency, they don't have like even a proper name. They they hide behind some fake profiles. So it's clear there is some organization paying these people to tweet, to boycott somehow, or just to spread some ideas, Facebook to, ideas or whatever against some others. That could also happen in the forums or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But it's how, how can you get to know yes. that? That's a problem. But anyway, without that, you can also have some information about what is happening in public. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a question? Why did you choose like Muslims in Ireland? Because this is, <laughs> because we were, uh, there was someone um, Told us why did you write an article for a monograph on Muslims and Ireland, minorities in Ireland? So <laughs> sorry, this is the honest question. <laughs> but there was the origin. But then we found like really interesting points there because it was it's a monograph on minorities in Ireland. One of the minorities is Muslims, right? So we studied like this. But then we found like very interesting findings. Are you planning to like expand your research? Maybe to compare to other parts. Yes, actually, this is our third country. Oh. <laughs> we started with uh, with uh, Islamophobia and um, also cyber Islamophobia, right? Um, but uh, United States, England, and now Ireland. So now, more or less, we are having an idea of what is happening in the world. If there are some common patterns, or you forgot also, German. Not yet. We didn't have time. <laughs> so it was study like two, one year ago. Studying was in Denmark. Oh, it's so many countries. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have, yeah, yeah, we have no the problems that in Scandinavian countries and yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Germany is in the list. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Hey, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. For